Hello again and welcome to episode 41 of our online MTCNA program. Today, we'll continue the subject of IP connections with a focus on the related connection state. We'll start with a brief look at SYN and SYNAC floods as types of real-life invalid connections, introduce to you the related connection state, and then talk about one of the most common protocols that uses the related connection state in IP networks. In the previous session, we had a flashback to our tutorial about the trusted LAN and the not-so-trustworthy WAN networks for any given device. Afterward, by creating a firewall filter that accepted traffic with the new connection state from the WLAN1 to class in interface, we taught the router what the LAN is and moved on to accept established connections as well. And finally, we created a filter with the drop action for all other types of traffic that completely secured our router from any type of traffic coming from the WAN. However, for better security, we need to specifically target invalid connections to remain unharmed from cyber threats such as DDoS attacks like SYN floods. So first, let's see what SYN and SYNAC floods are. If you refer to the firewall and QoS case studies in MyCritics documentation reference, you'll find that these floods are a type of DOS attack, a subject which we covered a few sessions ago. These specific types of DOS attacks work by sending a large continuous traffic of SYN requests to a target with the hope of consuming enough resources of that server so that it eventually becomes unavailable to process legitimate traffic. In router OS, there is a specific feature that can tackle these types of attacks, which can be activated using this script or referring to the IP menu and the settings submenu to enable TCP SYN cookies. Doing so will send back AG packets with a cryptographic hash that will be echoed back by the client as part of its SYN AG packet. If the source kernel does not see this cookie in the echo response, it will drop that packet as invalid traffic. Quite similarly, SYNAC floods include sending spoofed SYNAC packets at a high rate, which will force the server to use a great portion of resources to process these packets out of order, so much so that the server becomes unable to process valid traffic, giving the attacker a DOS or DDoS condition. Luckily, SYNAC floods can also be treated in router OS using this specific script. So, in order to target invalid traffic from our WAN through a separate rule, we need to create another filter rule with the input chain and limit its connection state to invalid traffic. Once we choose the drop action for this rule and bring it above the other drop action for all other WAN traffic, you'll easily fend off any type of invalid traffic coming toward the class AP. Anyway, that concludes our discussion on invalid traffic, and now is the time for the fourth connection state that is related. Related connections, as their name suggests, are in fact related to an already established connection. In other words, to have a related connection, we must first have a connection that is considered established, which will then spawn another connection outside the main established connection, which is identified as related. If you take a look at the filter subheading in the firewall and QoS menu in the IPv4 properties table, you will see that related connections are related to but not parts of an existing connection, the examples of which include ICMP errors or packets that start FTP data connections. You can find the FTP service from the IP menu and the services submenu, which by default is on port 21. To see FTP in action, we'll first disable all firewall filters we had in place. Next, we'll create a new filter with the input chain and the TCP protocol specifically for the destination port of 8291. We are choosing this destination port because we expect to receive a large amount of traffic from it, and therefore, by choosing the accept action, we aim to keep this large volume of traffic out of our log records. Next, we'll make another filter with the input chain and the TCP protocol, but with the pass-through action and a relevant log prefix. 
And now, with these two filter rules in place, we should proceed to establish an FTP connection from the trainee PC on the LAN to the class AP. For this purpose, from the system menu and the user submenu, we'll first create a separate user for this connection, which we'll name FTP. As for the FTP connection and file transfer, we are using FileZilla, one of the most well-known applications in this regard. Here, by inputting the host or destination address of 10.0.0.254 on the class AP and our credentials, we can log into the router. Once the FTP connection is established, a small traffic is recorded by our last filter. Moreover, our new FTP user has also become active as you can see in the active users list. With a closer look at our log records, we can see that the FTP traffic is coming in from the WLAN1 to class in interface, but has no out interface since it is an input traffic directed at the local processes of the router. The connection state of the very first packet is new and it is based on the TCP protocol. It is coming from the source IP address of our LAN PC with a randomly generated port directed toward the destination address of the class AP. Also, as you can see, the destination port for this traffic is 21, like the default setting in the services window. Next, after a few established connections, the FTP login to the class AP takes place. And subsequently, all following connections are of the established connection state and the destination port for all of them is 21. At this stage, we'll send the file to the class AP via a simple drag and drop and see what happens in the router's logs. As it can be seen here, among all our established connections, we now find an instance of a related connection that represents the very first connection required for the file transfer based on the overall FTP connection. Quite interestingly, the destination port for this connection is no longer 21, and for this related connection, the destination port is the randomly created port of 39941. Also, another point to mention is that after this related connection, which is also a new connection, we have some records with the established connection state, but with the same new and randomly created destination port of 39941. As a side note, if you see a related connection after the FTP login but before the file transfer, that connection has been spawned since FileZilla has fetched the files available on the router, which requires a connection outside the main FTP connection. Now, to incorporate related connections in our overall firewall process, once we have disabled our two new test rules and enabled our previous filters, we can refer to the second rule that was already accepting established connections and add related connections as another connection state for this filter. Doing so teaches the class AP to accept related connections that may be spawned after the creation of an established connection. So far, just like the instructions of using oxygen masks in an airplane emergency, you have learned how to take care of your own edge router before helping others in the network. Next up, we'll be looking at firewall concerning forward traffic and taking care of client devices on the network beyond your router. Stay tuned, send us your questions in the comments section, and give us a thumbs up if you like this video.